A bloomer is a classic style of bread which is absolutely perfect for beginners. Kneading the dough vigorously, knocking back, strengthens the structure in the dough so you can bake without a tin. Let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that I do is measure out my dry ingredients. So that's 10 grams of salt and seven grams of fast action dried yeast. Also, 320 ml of cool water. The reason I'm using cool water is because I don't necessarily want to use warm water to speed up the process. Using cool water will allow this dough to prove in its own time, which will have the best flavor and the best texture possible for this bake. Also, I'm going to measure out 40 ml of olive oil. This will help enrich the dough slightly. Here I've got 500 grams of strong white bread flour. This is good quality flour. I'm going to add in my salt. I'm going to mix that around slightly and also that yeast and give it a little mix. The reason I'm doing it this way is if the yeast is exposed to the salt, it's going to slow it down or even kill it. So putting in the salt first, mixing it around is going to evenly distribute all of this. I'm also going to add in that olive oil and the water. I'm not going to put it in all at once. I will put in about half to start off with and then I'll add a little at a time. Now I'm going to really quickly bring this mixture together. What we're aiming for here is quite a wet dough. When you're starting out, probably think that using a drier dough is best, but actually working with a wetter dough is going to produce a better bread. So I add in that water a little bit at a time and then keep working it. You can see now the dough is quite wet, which is good. Now that I've mixed all of that together, I'm going to start kneading it. So I'm going to move my bowl out of the way and put some olive oil on the worktop. You can see this dough is slightly sticky. That is absolutely fine. And as I said, it's good to work with a slightly wetter dough. I think the key is to work the dough with a bit of energy. Use your hands to move it around, keep the dough on the move. When I'm kneading, I'm rolling the dough in and out, in and out. I'm lifting it off the worktop, slapping it on the worktop. All of these movements is basically developing the gluten, which is really important. Everybody has their own style of kneading, but this is mine, and you can experiment and see what is best for you. Slowly but surely, you'll lose that stickiness and you'll have a really nice, elastic, beautiful dough. Kneading bread is an integral part of bread making. The whole idea of kneading the bread is to build up the gluten in the dough, which will give it the air and the rise that you need when it bakes. Kneading dough between five and 10 minutes will build up that elastic gluten that you need, particularly as a beginner. You should maybe knead it for a little bit longer because it does take practice. And just remember, all of that kneading develops the perfect texture for the perfect loaf. After this time kneading the dough, you can see it's changed completely and it's got this really lovely silky elastic texture, which is exactly what you want. And you can just keep kneading it, keep moving it around until you develop this sort of texture, which is absolutely perfect. After this period of time, you should be able to stretch the dough like this and you can see that gluten has developed really, really nicely. I'm going to put this into a big dough ball and put into a lightly oiled bowl going to put over my plastic sheet let this prove anything up to three hours my next step is getting a baking tray and putting some baking parchment on there my kitchen temperature is 19 celsius you can see this dough after two and a half hours has doubled in size after this period of time, I'm now going to knock this bread back and I'm using my fists, I'm using my hands. Knocking all of this air out of the dough will allow the dough to have a really nice structure. When it rises, it's going to rise upwards. So don't be afraid to get your hands really in there. Knock all of that air out to form this dough into a classic bloomer shape. You can do this in two parts. Part one, roll the dough on itself. And then the second part will be using your hands to sculpt the loaf. You want to gently rock this back and forth and you want to manipulate the dough so it creates this lovely bloomer shape. Move this around, use your worktop to just gently mold the shape. And after a few minutes of molding, you can see you've got this lovely bloomer shape. I use my bread scraper to move all of that flour out of the way. And now I can place my dough on my baking sheet. 
If you are enjoying my video today, it would be amazing if you could smash that like button. It really helps promote my video through the YouTube algorithm. I want to let this prove again anything from 45 minutes to an hour until it's increased in size. I've let this dough have its second proof for a good hour and I'm going to sprinkle this with water. You could use a water bottle but flicking the water on with your fingers is absolutely fine. This will help develop a really nice crust. I'm also going to sprinkle on some flour, brush some of this flour off. Be gentle, you don't want to knock out that air. Perfect, once you've sprayed some water on there and you've got a light coating of flour, you can use a razor to slash the surface of the dough. This will allow the dough to expand in the oven to give it its classic bloomer shape. I've preheated my oven to 220 degrees Celsius and I've put a baking tray with some hot water in the bottom. Let this come up to temperature again and then put my bloomer in. That can cook for 20 to 25 minutes and turn down the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius. Cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. When you take it out of the oven, transfer it to a baking tray to let it cool. Here we have a classic bloomer. This is absolutely perfect for beginners. It has this lovely rustic appearance to it and it's the perfect bread to start making. Thank you for watching my video today and until next time fellow foodies, see you later.